Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to show you how to bring your ideas to life using 3D printing. Over the years, there's been a lot of different projects I've worked on, whether they're cosplay related, some form of woodworking, 3D printing, and there's so many different ways you can go about actually taking an idea and turning that into something physical. And I've sort of developed a process that I find works really well in order to keep me on track and to make sure that everything's going right. And even if it doesn't, I have a strategy to get through it. I'm going to use a recent project that we did as an example. That way I can better explain how it worked for me, what I learned, what I would do differently, and that how that would better apply to you. So in this case, we had a meetup coming up and we needed some form of a project to display there. And in the past, we've done a foosball table with Bob from I Like To Make Stuff, and that was very well received. So we wanted to do something on that same level, something like a game that would be interactive with people that are there. And through a little deliberation, we figured out that a Plinko board would be the way to go. Whether you're working on this project alone or with a group, it's helpful to sit down and really think about what you're trying to achieve. So in our case, we wanted an interactive arcade game and plan A was a basketball hoop and the kind where the hoop moves back and forth. The initial idea was to use Core XY kinematics, but after thinking about it, there was electronics and troubleshooting and calibrating to get it to all work right. And in the end, it would have been just too expensive and hard to work with, especially with the deadline we have. So instead, our creative lead came up with the idea of a Plinko board. And with that idea, we have printed parts. We still have electronics in the forms of lights. Fairly easy to put together. It wasn't a lot of troubleshooting. It's just build it and, and that's it. And it even allowed us customization in different Plinko pucks. So that was a great idea. And that's what we decided to push forward with. So now that we had an initial idea, it was important to figure out well, what exactly is it going to look like? Now you can use whatever's easiest for you to come up with this concept art. In my case, it was to make a fairly rough sketch within SOLIDWORKS, which is my 3D modeling software of choice, but you can use whatever works best for you, whether that's sketching or SketchUp or even just Photoshop. Whatever works best to figure out your concept art, go with that. And then once I had that concept art, I passed it along to our creative lead and he put his creative touch in it. He gave it some colors, figured out, well, let's print these parts in blue. Let's make the backboard black, wood along the sides, add lights, things like that. And it gave it the creative pop that 
I wouldn't have been able to come up, come up with, but within the team, it proved to really help sell the look of the Plinko board. So now that we have a good basis to work off of, we have a good first draft, it's time to actually bring the idea to life and start working on it. So in this case, go into your design software, start sketching it out, start making parts that you are either going to print, you're going to cut out, you're going to assemble it. So make sure that this is basically the final dimensions of these parts. And when you're designing things, make sure to take into account what your printer is capable of. So some printers have a 0.5 tolerance where any closer to each other, they will stick together or other printers can get all the way down to 0.05 millimeters. So make sure you test those tolerances of your printer before you decide to make it where the pegs are 0.05 millimeters away from the puck, in which case your printer's not that well calibrated and your puck just gets stuck falling through. So whenever you're designing something that intends to have a lot of different parts going together, make sure that it's capable of being replicated on your 3D printer. Once you have a couple different pieces modeled out, make sure to print at least one of each part so you have a good idea of what it's going to look like when it's finished. You don't want to print out a full set and realize that ah, it's just not as big as I really want it to be or the shape just isn't quite right. Like in the case of the pucks, the original version was about a quarter inch thick which just seemed a little too small but at a half inch it seems much more acceptable for a puck size. These feel a lot better in your hand than just a very slim one. So just make sure that you do print out the first prototype, which is what 3D printers are there for, is to be able to prototype. So once you have those, then move on to printing the whole collection of parts. Once your design is finalized and you've started printing out your parts, start making a build of materials, or BOM. What this is is a place, it is a spreadsheet that collects all of the items you'll need, the exact quantity you will get when you buy them. In the case of like screws, you're gonna get say 50, but you really only need 13. Keep track of that in this chart and keep track of everything like two sheets of plywood, a six by eight sheet of acrylic and list the pricing where you got it. Just in case you need to go back and get these parts again, you know where to go, you can click it or you can share it if you're really excited about this project and you want more people to make it. In that case, you want to have a very well organized list. And on top of that, make sure that once it's all done, you're going to have your total where it says here's how much this will cost. Give yourself a margin of error just in case things go wrong, because there will be things that go wrong where you think this part would have worked, you get it, you assemble it and find uh, it's just not working right, and now it's just something you're not going to need. In that case, it's wasted budget. So make sure you have a little bit of room where you expect that, oh, this isn't a $250 project. It's actually gonna be maybe $300. You just wanna have that bit of leeway and not be struggling towards the end when you run out of money. Once you have your bomb finished, now is a good time to start coming up with your game plan. And this is just where you're gonna list off a to-do list of things that need to be done. By making this to-do list, it makes it a lot less daunting. Instead of having just this big overwhelming project, you have small little bite-sized pieces that make it a lot easier to just get started on that one. And then once you're started with the one and you finish it, well, it's easy to start the second one and the third and the fourth. And before you know it, you have a third of the project done within the first day, just because that first step wasn't so hard to get started. Now that all the prep work's done, you're ready to get started assembling. Now, whether you have a dedicated workbench or just whatever space you have available to you, make sure to keep it organized because you don't want to be searching for supplies that are right next to you but underneath something and wasting time doing that when you could just keep it a lot simpler and keeping an organized place where you put everything when you're not using it. Like I mentioned earlier about making sure to leave room in your budget for things to go wrong, leave room within your timeline for things to go wrong. Because like in my case, the pegs weren't super gluing well enough to the backboard. Because I had painted it, it provided a protective layer to the wood and the super glue just wouldn't hold. The pegs would come off, taking just the paint with it, leaving the raw wood behind, and just the slightest flick and they were coming off. So what I had to do was drill small divots along every peg and then glue back into that. And even still, because of the deadline I had, that's what had to work. And it worked very briefly and then all 120 plus pegs are gone. So you just wanna make sure that you have enough time on the end of your project to be able to troubleshoot and test and see where are things gonna go wrong? What are gonna be the stress points? And how can I prep to be able to fix this once they start breaking or fix them before they start breaking? After the first time you actually use your project, whether it's Plinko, whether it's a big print or some cosplay, whatever it is, you're gonna notice things that you could have improved on. Could be a major thing, it could be a minor thing. 
But in any case, don't be discouraged because you are going to want to improve it and you are going to be disappointed initially because it didn't work, but it it's going to be a lot better once you take the time to sit down and look and say, what can I do better? How can this be improved? And in the case of Plinko, I can sand down all the super glue, fill in all the divots, use just nails with some spacers to give it the same look as printed pegs, but be a lot stronger because there's a mechanical hold and not a chemical bond, and even use a uh, paint the acrylic so that there is a Matter Hackers logo, things like that. These are all things that either I ran out of time for or didn't really know that I wanted, but now that you have the time after the deadline to actually go back and work on it again, you have room for improvement and you can actually enact them. And that about covers it. So whether you're bringing a big idea or a small idea to life, having these strategies and tips will help turn a daunting task into something a lot more manageable. However, if there's some tip or trick that I didn't mention that you feel is helpful with your projects, feel free to leave it in a comment down below. We'd love to hear about it. I'm Alex from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.